Hey guys, Bartell's Bookshelf here, doing a quick uh, wrap-up on some of my recent reads. Uh, I mentioned in my previous uh, video that um, instead of doing kind of a very rigid, structured, like scheduled, you know, like monthly wrap-up or whatever, I'm just going to do a little wrap-up with every uh, every few books I read, every like three to five books maybe, you know. Maybe occasionally I'll do single reviews if I feel like I have enough to say about it, but generally I I'm happy doing these kind of like recent reads, sort of uh, compilation things. And uh, yeah, I finally shaved, um, <laughs> so you can really see the extent of my baldness, <laughs> but whatever, I'm 30. I'm 31 this year, it happens, so. I read a, another Christopher Pike. This is my third so far. This is a uh, Monster. I've been really getting into Christopher Pike since uh, I read uh, The Midnight Club in October. I was a Goosebumps kid. I didn't grow up with Christopher Pike, so it's been interesting kind of going back and, and seeing all of the stuff that I missed out on. And yeah, I, I really enjoy his books. Like they're, I wouldn't call them like masterpieces or anything, but they're really solid, fun YA horror novels that are surprisingly... Um, complex and violent and um just very bizarre in a lot of ways so i picked this one because i mean you can tell probably tell by the cover this is about um this is about a girl named mary carlson who walks into a party one day with a shotgun and blows away uh, a cheerleader and a jock and uh, she's attempting to blow away a third one but he escapes and she gets arrested and she claims that the reason that she killed these people was because they were no longer human they had become monsters and it's about her friend, um, Angela Warner, who gets involved basically uh, figuring out um, why her friend th uh, thought this was going on. Sort of discovering um, the, the secrets for herself. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoy sort of like uh, humans being turned into monsters type stories. And especially because this, is, this involves, you know, jock, you know, big buff jock boys being turned into monsters. You know, that's kind of like, <laughs> that's my kryptonite. So I wanted to read this and... Yeah, it was pretty entertaining. Um, there's a surprising amount of gore. Like, the, the book opens with uh, these murders, and it describes, like, um, one of the jocks, like, guts hanging out as he gets, like, shot with a shotgun, and describes, like, the, the cheerleaders, like, the top of her skull being blown off and, like, blood going everywhere. Uh, and one thing that I find uh, interesting and sort of funny about Christopher Pike books is that everyone's horny. Everyone's always, like, thinking about sleeping with guys or, like, thinking about what, what, what you know, they would look like naked or whatever. You know, like, everyone's so horny in these books, which I guess is pretty accurate to what kids are like but um honestly like the the first half of this was a little bit boring because um angela takes forever to like figure out what's going on with you know the these kids at the school um but once it gets into kind of revealing the actual mystery of what's going on and kind of the whole backstory behind that um it gets weirdly like cosmic and um <clears throat> she ends up kind of like falling in love with um the main uh jock guy named rick um even though she kind of knows that he's a monster so there's an interesting kind of like falling in love with a monster kind of vibe to it it just gets uh, crazier and crazier as it goes on um until like it goes places that i really didn't expect in terms of like the people like uh who, who ended up living and dying and the, the general sort of escalation of the plot really didn't go anywhere i thought it would um and it ends on a surprisingly bleak note um which i thought was really unusual and one of the other things that was interesting about it was that um for a ya horror book there's a lot of like themes of kind of like the mingling of like sex and violence of like blood and sweat and things like that and it's just and and sort of the uh the erotic allure of like blood and things like that. it's just it's very it's surprisingly like sort of a cosmic and like psychosexual for a book like this so yeah uh, generally i think I, I i enjoyed this one um this isn't my i wouldn't say this is my favorite pike as i said it takes a little bit to get going but um once it does like it just gets really crazy uh, really over the top really bizarre um so it's in the end i think it was really really entertaining and i've got like 20 other christopher pike books because i've acquired a whole bunch over the past few months from like lots and things like that so I definitely look forward to um, digging into more of his stuff. Um, so yeah, that's Monster. And then um, I picked up this book because it's kind of a similar plot to Monster, and, and I was just in the mood for it. And I had started this uh, a while ago, but never finished it. So this is a uh, Creature by John Saul. Obviously, um, John Saul is uh, one of the many sort of famous... Um, best-selling horror authors kind of along the lines of like Dean Koontz or somebody like that. Uh, I, his stuff's everywhere. If you go to any horror section in a bookstore, you're going to see it. Actually, I, I had a copy of this um, that was sent to me a while ago, and I started it, but I wasn't able to finish it because it was actually mi missing pages. Um, so I had to buy this brand new copy off of Amazon, and I didn't get back to it till just now um, because I just read Monster 
and I wanted something kind of in a similar vein. And I, and I remembered that I sort of I enjoyed kind of the beginning of what I read of this. I only read like the first 50 pages, but it was it was pretty interesting. This is about a family who works for this big um, uh, con- corporation, this big tech corporation called Terran Tech, who um, the father gets a, um, a, a promotion. And they move to this town called Silverdale, which is like uh, sort of a company town. Um, everything's like basically provided by the company. Everything's funded by the company, down to like the schools and everything. This family has a son named uh, Mark, who's uh, kind of uh, he had a, a bout of rheumatic fever when he was younger, which means that um, he he um, his growth was stunted. He's very short. He's very skinny, and he's kind of very uh, shy and sort of put upon because of that. But everyone in this town, all, all of the all of the the boys on the football team are all gigantic, you know, hulking, you know, beasts who uh, seem to you know be like incredibly strong and, and virile and just and very like powerful. And uh, he finds out about this mysterious uh, sports clinic behind the school where um, a lot of these boys are being subjected to an uh, experimental treatment that seems to be uh, curing them of their ills and giving them these uh, strong, powerful physiques and and just and leading to, to much uh, success for the football team. But of course, uh, it's never that simple, is it? And um, obviously, uh, some darker uh, things are revealed. To be honest, this book was just okay. Um, I'd never read John Saul before. I, I've seen his stuff everywhere. A, a lot of his books have sold like tons of copies. Like I think uh, "Suffer the Children" was was a really popular one. And yeah, to be honest, I, f- I just found this kind of middling, sort of a Dean Koontz 2.0. You know, like it's there, there's nothing overly wrong with it, but there's just the characters are just okay. The prose isn't anything special. It's just very meh. I mean, uh, everything that I just summarized to you, you can probably predict exactly what the plot is um, and, and how everything goes just for me telling it to you, just for me explaining the basic premise to you, which is a shame because it was an interesting idea. I mean, as I said, it's very similar to a uh, monster boys being, you know, mysteriously transformed in, into these like monstrous creatures and stuff. It seemed like John Saul was going for sort of a, a social commentary on kind of like the perfection of like American towns, you know, like everybody dresses nice and all, everyone's all tall and handsome and everyone's interested in sports you know to the detriment of everything else there's a scene where mark tries to get a job at a, at a camera store but he can't because um all of the the football players and like the sports teams get like first dibs so there's this kind of like this almost like this cultish like hero worship based around it so i thought he was kind of going for that sort of thing um but he doesn't really like delve into that in any meaningful way it's sort of you know trying to be like a stepford wives kind of thing but it's just it just kind of like forgets a lot of that stuff like it doesn't really develop any of it a lot of the characters i thought were kind of bland um it didn't really have a whole lot to say beyond that mark um gets uh, submits himself to these uh treatments at the sports clinic and he begins to change in mysterious ways and that was kind of interesting but saul didn't really go into it as deeply as i would have liked honestly like what what kind of intrigued me was that john saul is an openly gay author he, he's he's um he has a he's had a partner for like 20 something years but this book felt very like conservative in a weird sort of way like because the idea of it was that you know it's it's sort of ostensibly i thought you know critiquing the idea of you know like the nuclear family you know the the handsome son who plays football that kind of thing the sort of alternative that it offers doesn't really have anything unique or like interesting or transgressive to it It, i i think what this book needed was a little bit more like transgression something a little bit more i don't know meaty something a little bit more uh, unusual it just felt very middle of the road which i thought was interesting given that you know he's kind of a you know as a gay man i would have thought he could have brought some interesting sort of perspectives to this but he really didn't it got a lot more interesting towards the end as things kind of start heating up and there's some pretty entertaining um gore and like monster action um towards the end um, some pretty, there, there, there's some like decently like suspenseful and exciting moments, but overall, like I just thought it was very middle of the road, very, you know, like airport read kind of stuff. And maybe you're into that. I know Ollie said that, um, you know, airport reads are his jam. So like if you, if you have a taste for this kind of like 80s horror bestseller, sort of Dean Koontz kind of vibes, you know, like VC Andrews maybe, although it's not nearly as trashy as VC Andrews. I think that's what this book needed. It needed to be way more trashy than it was. As it was, it just feels very generic. But if you like that kind of, you know, like the sort of the, the pot boilers, you know, the airport reads, like, it's not, you could do worse. It, there was nothing overtly wrong with it, but there wasn't anything really special about it either, in my opinion. So I don't know if I'll read more John Saul. If any of you have read John Saul and there are any like particular books of his that you really like that you would recommend, let me know because I'll be happy to check them out. I, I have a couple more. 
Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I wasn't too impressed by this. So yeah, we'll see. And finally, I have <clears throat> Kraken by China Mieville. This was a, a buddy read with a friend of mine, a uh, pen pal, and um, he's been really getting into um, fantasy and fantasy stuff lately. He's been reading a lot of Neil Gaiman, and he just recently read um, Perdido Street, China Mieville's uh, Perdido Street Station, and all the Boss Log stuff. Um, and so we decided to buddy read this together. Uh, and yeah, this was surprisingly enjoyable. This was a lot of fun. So this is an urban fantasy about a guy named Billy Harrow, who's like this kind of nerdy dude who works um for this uh this this who works for uh, the research wing of Lond London's Natural History Museum um preserving um you know the species and stuff and they've recently acquired this massive uh squid called the Archituthis that's like this it's it's a huge giant squid like the tank like takes up half the room and stuff and he shows up to work one day and it's mysteriously disappearing it basically turns out that he gets pulled into this huge underground of um magic users um that are kind of secretly existing within sort of London society. And he ends up getting caught up in this race to find the Kraken as um, all these different factions are hunting it down, trying to find out where it is and what happened to it. Because basically the Kraken is considered uh, an embodiment of a god and uh, it w has the potential to bring about the apocalypse. So all of these different people are scrambling to find it, either to wield the power that it contains or to contain the power. So yeah, again, this was really entertaining. Um, I've read a little bit of China Mieville before. I read a little bit of uh, Perdido Street Station, but I never finished it. I need to try it again at some point. That was like six, seven years ago. So, But this is very different from what I've read of his and seen of his other stuff. His other stuff tends to be a little bit more leisurely paced, a little bit more um, I don't want to say intellectual, but a little bit less um, action oriented. But this just like goes off like a gunshot. This is just this crazy freewheeling escapade through a magical London um, with so many ideas being thrown at you, one after another after another. Like there's so many things that I just random throwaway things that I could talk about in this book, including all the various factions. There's um, the Church of God Kraken, who are uh, who uh, are the ones who worship um, you know the Kraken as like this uh, this ancient god, um, and um, they're they're one of the factions who are searching for it. And they have all of these like weird sort of rituals revolving around like uh, cephalopods and mollusks and stuff. There's uh, the London Mancers, who are these. This is this sort of neutral party that sort of um they kind of embody the city of london and they uh they read uh london's entrails literally they read london's entrails there's a scene where one of them literally takes an angle grinder cuts open a bit of road and some guts pop out and he literally like interprets the guts and there's even just like little throwaway things that, that are mentioned offhandedly like there's there's a character who um is allergic to greed and he gets like sick from it one of the 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 criminals is this sort of a mob like sort of kingpin guy named the tattoo who is a literal like living tattoo that's like uh inked on someone's back just so many ideas and so many imaginative things um there's there's a there's a a, a faction of the police uh called the fsrc that um they're sort of like the branch of the police that studies or that that, that takes care of supernatural phenomena they're kind of like um men in black that sort of deal and just there's just all this stuff all these characters all these factions all these ideas all these all these entities sort of vying for for competition and it's really crazy and chaotic and really imaginative. And that's the main thing that kept me reading is just the propulsiveness of the narrative. Um, every time you think you're going to get bored, like, or, or you think, like, you know, like, where is this going to go? Like, me, Avil, like, throws something new at you that just keeps you going. It's to the book's credit and to the book's detriment, I think. I think there's so much going on and there's so many factions and, 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 and interests and characters and things to keep track of. That you can that you can get a little lost in the shuffle. I had to keep kind of reminding myself who was who and what was what and what was going on. And there were a few like plot threads that I think were kind of like left by the wayside that I w I would have liked to have seen developed more. But overall, like it's really really entertaining. There's some really cool, really imaginative stuff, and it's very it's a very geeky book. Um, there's a lot of references to like. Um, you know, Doctor Who, Star Trek, that kind of thing. Um, lots of uh, references to, like, 80s pop music. And, and I think also that chaoticness kind of captures some of the flavor of, of London, you know, of this big multicultural city where everyone's packed together like sardines and there's all kinds of different people of different creeds and backgrounds and everything. So in that sense, I think the chaotic nature of it kind of suits it. Um, and it also, one of the things I also really liked about it was how Mieville kind of wove in... Um, the culture of London, you know, the slang, the various kind of uh, little subcultures and things, and tied that into this magical world. Um, 
So if you like that kind of thing, if you like that sort of urban fantasy, sort of alternate London stuff in the, in, in the vein of something like um, like Weave World or um, Neverwhere or American Gods or something kind of like that, um, this is, I think you'd really enjoy this, especially if, if you're a fantasy geek or like a sci-fi geek, like this is this will be right up your alley. This is kind of a celebration in a lot of ways of uh, geek culture with this sort of um, layer of uh, supernatural sort of sorcery over it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, it's not my favorite, I don't think, of what I've read of Mieville's stuff. Uh, I don't know if it's entirely representative of a lot of his stuff, but, there, but there's just so much cool stuff in it. And it's just so much fun, and it moves at such a propulsive pace that it really doesn't give you time to get bored or to really, like, um, think about stuff, if, if you know what I mean. It's very fast-paced, but it's written really beautifully as well. Um, Miev, as I said, Mieville kind of weaves in sort of London culture with like magic and um, and, and and very like poetic language and and there's some a lot of moments that are very like experimental and it's 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 just very it's very it's all very like freewheeling and chaotic um, and and really entertaining to read because of that. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. I definitely need to read more Mieville in the future. I have a bunch of his books, so I don't know when I'll get to them, but I do want to at some point. But I really enjoyed this. This is probably my favorite of these three reads. So, so yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, have you read any of these books? Um, did you like them? Anything else that you'd recommend to me? Um, you know, talk to me. Let's talk books. I hope to see you guys uh, soon. Hope maybe in like another week or two here, um, just whenever I get enough books read that I feel like I have enough to talk about. Um, but until then, uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.